Hello everyone, my name is Black and welcome to part 3 of my Team Fortress 2 Unusual Trading Guide, where I tell you guys the ins and outs of unusual trading in an easy to understand way. Last episode we learned about the different kinds of effects that unusual hats can have, and which effects are better than others. This episode I'll be talking about the different qualities of an unusual that can make it good or bad. In other words, I'm going to explain what makes the best unusuals so good, and what makes the worst ones so bad. Sometimes it's hard to tell what hats are better than others. What makes a good hat with a low tier effect better or worse than a high tier hat with a low tier effect? What are low tier and high tier hats in the first place? To start here, I'll lay out a few ground rules for determining if a hat is high tier, low tier, or middle, mid tier. The first thing to pay attention to is the class that the hat is for. Some classes aren't anywhere near as popular as others, and some just don't have very good looking hats. Due to this, hats for certain classes can be worth significantly more or less than hats for other classes. The least expensive are usually heavy hats, followed by engineer slightly above that, then medic, spy, and sniper are all around the same tier, after that come demo man and pyro unusuals, and finally scout and soldier unusuals. Soldier unusuals are generally the most popular and best unusuals for any single class. All class and multi-class hats, such as the Modest Pile of Hat and the Team Captain, are even above that in most cases, making them the most desirable and expensive unusuals. Something to keep in mind, though, is that this class order doesn't always hold true. There are a few exceptions. For example, a really high-tier heavy hat like the Dragonborn Helmet is worth more on average than some hats for other classes. Learning the exceptions is part of what you'll be doing as you trade more and more. Another thing to pay attention to is if the unusual hat is a misc item or a regular hat. If it's a misc, the value rises significantly, since it can be worn along with a regular unusual hat to make a double effect combo. These look awesome, so obviously people will want them. This means, for example, if I have an engineer unusual, which are usually pretty low tier, but it's a misc, it's most likely worth more than a great deal of soldier hats with the same effect, or maybe even some all classes. Gotta get them misks. Another thing to look for, although this one is probably obvious if you watched the last episode, is the unusual effect that's on the hat. If you missed the last episode, you can click on the link in the description or in the outro to watch it. Basically, the point I'm drawing from that is that if a hat has a really high tier effect, such as burning flames, sunbeams, roboactive, cloudy moon, etc., then it's obviously going to be worth a lot more than that same hat with an effect like nuts and bolts or bubbling. Again, I want to reiterate how unwanted summer effects are, as if I didn't say it enough already. If you trade for one of these, expect to take a very long time, at least a few days to a couple of weeks, to sell it off. This next criteria might also seem pretty obvious, but it's an important one. The looks of the hat itself. Take the team captain, for example. It's really nice looking, according to most people at least. It's also multi-class. Compare this to something like the Coupe Disaster, which is for heavy only and is just plain ugly. It's clear which one is higher tier. There are a few weird exceptions to this rule as well, one of them being with the Coupe, weirdly enough. Since it's notoriously known for being so bad, it's gained kind of a cult following, and some people are actually willing to buy them. This doesn't happen 99% of the time with hats though, so if your hat is low tier, expect it to take a while to sell. If you're just starting to unusual trade, you'll have to get a bunch of heavy or engineer hats with some pretty bad effects to start. That's alright though, because you'll eventually build your way up to the all classes, multi classes, and misks with enough hard work. Alright, that'll do it for this episode guys. I hope you learned something from this explanation of high tier and low tier unusuals. If you liked the video, hit that like button, it means a lot to me. And if you like what I'm doing here, or you want to be notified of my future videos, hit subscribe. Stay awesome guys, I'll see you next time.